Babylon's Fall is dead. Square Enix shuttered the game, rendering it no longer playable on any platform in any capacity. And if you're understandably not in the loop, Babylon's Fall was a hack-and-slash action RPG developed by Platinum Games. It takes place in the dystopic city of Babylon, wherein you play as a sentinel working against your will for the Empire to pluck every last shiny resource from the dungeons of ancient Babylonian civilization. It's a cool setting and a cool premise, but it's also cold dead. Being a live service game, Babylon's Fall required an internet connection to start up. Yes, even if you only wanted to play solo. Everything in the game ran through Square Enix's servers, and when they pulled the plug, the game went dark. Permanently. It's a miserable state of affairs. Games didn't use to be this way, and we shouldn't put up with this disgusting practice, but it's steadily becoming more ingrained in our culture. All that righteous rambling aside, what was the actual game like? Well, you pick a class, you enter a level, and you fight baddies. The game's unique spin is that, rather than attack with a measly one or two weapons, you get four of them at once. One for light attacks, one for heavy attacks, and two for auxiliary attacks. The two auxiliary weapons, called Dynamis in this instance, can be used at any time, regardless of what your character's body is doing. This, as you might imagine, is kinda cool. It's neat to wail on enemies with your primary sword or hammer or what have you, and then have two sets of bows rapidly unloading at the same time. There's even a stamina meter of sorts which ties it all together. If you use your Dynamis too much, you won't have any stamina to dodge. Unfortunately, in practice it just comes down to button mashing. You smash square or smash triangle, while occasionally hammering on R2 or L2 to use your Dynamis at the same time. And if you see a sword or other shiny weapon headed your way, you press dodge. Though sometimes even dodging isn't necessary, you can tank a lot, and I do mean a lot, of damage. This is thanks to the RPG mechanics, where simply having an adequately big number means you don't have to strategize at all. On top of that, you get a whopping 10 health potions at the start of every level, and 5 continues. Goodness gracious me. So the multi-weapon system may be the game's biggest strength, sure, but it almost feels useless. You can mash attack mindlessly with whichever ones you have equipped, regardless of type, and the only thing that seems to matter is whether your equipment is adequate. If you've got decent reflexes and know how to slap the same buttons over and over frantically, then you'll do fine. It's a tragically dull combat system with little of Platinum Games' traditional flair or creativity. It feels like there's no real spark here. Though, to be fair, the fighting fares a lot better than the platforming. You see, battles are broken up by traversal, and that traversal takes the form of simplistic jumping and swinging. Very, very simplistic jumping and swinging. All of it functions, sure, but it's baffling. I can't really imagine why it's here at all, besides to say the game technically has variety. You just press circle when the game tells you to press circle, and jump around some rudimentary hazards. It's shamefully lacking in personality. In case you haven't gotten the big picture, Babylon's Fall just isn't very engaging to actually play, and it's almost impossible to even imagine where the live service elements fit into the experience. It feels like a straightforward hack and slash with action RPG elements hastily stuffed in, and while some of the boss fights certainly have interesting patterns and ideas, they go down as easily as anyone else, they just take longer. Getting a high rank using the game's score system doesn't feel rewarding at all, thanks to the above mentioned flaws. So, if all of the gameplay is a bust, what else is there? Well, the story and setting, of course. And to be fair, those are absolutely the best part. Babylon is full of brown, golden brown, and dull blue hues. It is a miserable setting, so there are miserable faded colors, and it's thematically appropriate, as it draws to mind the tarnished and defiled beauty of the once proud Babylonians. I dig it. The storytelling and themes have some real punch to them as well. You play as a person kidnapped from your home country, 
forced into violent servitude where you risk your life for your oppressor. To what end? To make them money and fix their self-made problems, of course. And the public cheers for your suffering because the government tells them your pain is noble. You were once a member of a proud culture, but your unique history has been ground to dust under the imperialistic boots of capitalism. It's brutal. The world building goes in some interesting directions, with a particular focus on social politics and a dark fantasy and magic. Hey, I like me some dark fantasy, and Babylon's Fall delivers. Your character never knows who to trust or if it even matters that you trust them, because honestly, you don't have a choice. The lack of agency and overwhelming burden of your duty hangs heavy on your soul as you confront corrupt government officials, untrustworthy religious sects, and tortured relics of Sentinel's past. It's lovely, and it's worth suffering through the monotonous gameplay for, I think. Or at least, it would be worth suffering through if I were allowed to suffer through it. After playing a few hours with my brother and a couple missions solo thereafter, Babylon's Fall just stopped recognizing my PlayStation Plus subscription and demanded I repurchase to be allowed back in. I find it unlikely that it ran out since these purchases are done by the month, but regardless of whether it's a glitch or a technical error that I should contact support over, or my subscription just legitimately ended, it left me crashing into the live service wall again. This game already cost fair money, and I'd have to pay an additional $10 just to experience the last few days of its existence. And this was my last chance ever to do so. As someone who cares deeply about art and its preservation, it really sunk in deep how grotesque this business practice is. If I may go on a tangent for a moment, does anyone remember the Brave Little Toaster? That's a silly question, I'm sure many of you do. But to recap, The Brave Little Toaster was a film series about sentient appliances and their struggle with unloving consumers who eagerly discard them in favor of new, shinier gadgets. It got pretty existential and philosophical, as you might imagine. The third film in the series, Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, is my favorite. In that entry, the toaster and his companions travel, well, to Mars. When they arrive, they find a society of old, forgotten appliances who were made with planned obsolescence. That is to say, they were designed to fail, so consumers would be forced to purchase new ones. These appliances understandably harbor a great resentment toward humankind, and so plan to eradicate us with an actual, for real nuclear weapon. What follows is an incredibly touching and incredibly surreal scene, where the brave little toaster argues passionately for humanity's preservation, while the supreme commander of the Mars appliances, a giant fridge, argues for humanity's destruction. It's eye-opening, touching, and terrifying all at once. Do we humans deserve to live? And who should get to decide if not the very things we created to use and abuse? The very products of our self-made capitalist society are now our judge, as we potentially face our final moments as a species. In the end, the brave little toaster wins the debate by arguing for compassion, mercy, and the hope of a brighter tomorrow. The toaster insists that things are only getting better, not worse, and that humans are all basically good, even if their individual circumstances lead them to cruel actions. The line, a human is a gem, still gets some tears out of me. I hope that if the art and tools I have created were ever to judge my soul, they would be able to say the same of me. But then I think about Babylon's fall. I think about how planned obsolescence is not only legal, but it's now extended to art. That we've created art which is born from a greedy place made by ignorant people, which self-destructs when it no longer makes money. Babylon's fall was designed poorly to cut costs, given a low budget to cut costs, and stapled to a live service format to make as much money as feasible by abusing FOMO and other human vices. And unlike the appliances in Brave Little Toaster, games like Babylon's Fall can't be repaired. When they're broken, they're gone forever. 
The problem isn't that humans are sadistic, it's that we are indifferent and gluttonous. We'll consume more and more and more forever and refuse to think even for a moment about the systems which exploit us. I believe if the Brave Little Toaster and Martian Fridge had their debate again, accounting for all that's happened these last decades, the Fridge would win. Humanity, or what little is left of it in this age, would be eradicated. Hello, hello, thank you for reaching the end of the video. I know this one was pretty heavy, but honestly, companies deliberately destroying art is a pretty heavy thing. And yes, I know that Babylon's Fall was a failure commercially and critically, so you could say that that's a victory, right? That we're telling companies that we're not willing to put up with this, but that's not the case at all. People still engage with live service shenanigans and live service games all of the time. The only reason Babylon's Fall failed is because it wasn't a particularly enjoyable or addictive experience. It failed to be addictive. The fact that some other live service games are addictive and are successful, but will still die, is a much greater problem. We shouldn't be humoring live service nonsense at all. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's time to thank my patrons. Without, without them, this video definitely couldn't have been made. Uh, I do have a Patreon with some affordable tiers that I will link in the description if you're curious to support me. All right, here we go. Always be yourself, but if you can be a unicorn, always be a unicorn. Always be yourself, but if you can be a unicorn, always be a unicorn.